What is going on guys? It is your boy Sister here with a video here today bringing guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create a very uncool gaming cracked gaming text effect, something along those lines. Um, as you can see right here right now, it's a very cool simple style when it comes to just having a cracked text effect. Of course, it comes with like having a pretty cool font, maybe cartoony in this case. I did use Burbank, which is the Fortnite font in this little uh, tutorial here today. So with that being said, to set if I liked on the video, you can go secret down below, which will most likely be how I set up this little background here. It'd be like a nice cool little template for you guys to kind of replace the actual photos and stuff like that. So you can start using that for like maybe like a banner or a header with the actual text effect you'll learn in today's video. Um, also, I'm not feeling my absolute greatest at the moment. So I do want to try a different format of these text effect videos. You guys let me know in the comments section below whether you guys like them or not. Until then, let's just get this thing going and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so go ahead and get this thing going. I'm gonna go ahead and say to start off, of course you want a pretty cool like cartoony font. The one I am using, like I said before, is the Burbank Big Condensed. And with this font here, do not ever be afraid to press Control T and write and kind of like stretch it and whatever and kind of make it more of your kind of own. There's no really harm unless it looks like really, really awkward, but I would definitely suggest you guys, of course, at least try it out for yourselves if you guys want to. Um, so yeah, once you guys gotta figure out the actual font you wanna go ahead and use, I would start to go off the whole little crack stuff. So to go ahead and accomplish that, you want to basically right click on your actual text, go to rasterize type. This will basically allow you guys when you actually cut out things in regards to like when you pen tool things out. And when it comes to pen tooling, what you guys wanna go ahead and do is of course use your pen tool, which is P on your keyboard for the shortcut. And you wanna go ahead and kind of just click on the outside, then go inside of the actual letter and give yourself like little chops and then come right back out. And you wanna kind of repeat this process. I would stay away from just doing stuff like this where you kind of like cutting it in like this, like weird sort of triangles. This is not gonna give you the, the cracked effect that you look or are you kind of looking for? Because it's not really distorting the actual formation of the letter, and that is what you wanna focus on rather than just doing these little kind of like triangles or whatever, right? So I'm gonna go over here and be like, boom, I wanna cut in, it's like a really cool thing right there. Like, it's like, like, that looks really weird, but guess what, it's probably gonna work. The weirder it is, it's probably gonna work. So I will go ahead and just pre pretty much tell you guys to just do this over and over again until you get all through your letters. I would say maybe three to four average of the actual cutouts is what you're probably gonna want. All right, once you guys have all your pen tool markings connected, you wanna go ahead and go to your text layer and put on a layer mask. If you don't know what layer mask is, it basically takes your black and your white brush that you wanna either highlight over and black will erase, white will fill back in. So if we go ahead and right click, make selection, right? Make selection, we'll click, take all these pen tool markings that we just have and then make them into a selection. So if I press okay, it'll make them all into a selection. And then when we click on the actual layer mask, we can press alt backspace, that will quick fill our black color and you'll see that it erases. Then you can go ahead and use your pen tool if you guys want to or press control D to deselect, right? And you can see over here, the layer mask of these little black little markings. I don't know if you can see them very well, but they have little black little markings. So if you were to take your brush and say, I really don't like how this C looks over here, you can take your white eraser, you switch the colors, and you fill it back in and then redo it if you guys would like to. So it just makes it a more seamless process of not making it super, super awkward if you mess up. So now that that is all pretty much done, we can go ahead and move on to the, that was literally the hard part. So you're good for now. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on the actual crack text, go to where it says color overlay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my color in that I use for this example, which is a nice little blue here. If you guys would like to copy the hex code, it is right here for you guys. Now I'm gonna press okay and okay again. And then here comes those simple little drop shadows. So the first one I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually gonna make a duplicate for each of these drop shadows. So what I would do is take my actual layer, hold alt, and then I'm gonna click on the layer and then just drag it right below. Then I'll make a quick duplicate for us and also put it where it needs to be, which is below the actual layer. So for this copy here, I'm gonna go just rasterize this because it'll get rid of that color overlay that you guys saw that I had, right? Double gun it. Then I'm gonna go to where it says uh, drop shadow and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a nice little drop shadow by just taking my distance and moving a little bit further down, making sure my opacity is also at 100%. And for the actual color itself, we're gonna actually click on the blue. Then I would definitely suggest you guys, if you guys are ever gonna change the color of your drop shadow, don't just make it darker, change the color tone to a darker color. So you have blue, you can get a darker purple, you can get a darker blue, you can get a darker yellow, it would be more of like a greenish or an orange, excuse me. Um, so keep that in mind. Please change the actual hue bar on the right hand side, not just make it darker. It'll make that complete difference with the color theory looks way, way better. So actually go ahead and I'll move this a little further up to the more darker blues. Not too dark because you want to get too out of there, but a little further up, right? From wherever it is, move it a little further up. Then you want to go ahead and just drag this a little bit further down. And then we get a nicer blue sort of like drop shadow and you press OK. 
then we're going to press OK once again. And that'll be like that nice little simple part that's kind of like right above the actual text. So with this now, I'm going to go ahead and see. I'm going to zoom in. You can see the little spots. You might actually have the cracks like showing super, super well. Now, if you have more cracks going in a more of a horizontal, um, not so much, or excuse me, a, no, vertical, horizontal. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, on a vertical, like the straight line up and down is what I meant. You're not going to get too many weird inner shadow cuts where you can actually see the actual cut inside the shadow itself or the crack or the shadow. That's so, that's not English. There's no way that's English, but I hope you guys understand that if you guys don't see the drop shadow in your cut, that is what I mean. And if you guys do not see that, you want to go ahead and go to your drop shadow itself and then change your angle around so you can actually see more of that actual drop shadow inside each cut. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of weird and awkward. But... Once you guys are finished with this, you can go ahead and make another duplicate of that original text by dragging it down once again, right clicking on it, and I'm going to go ahead and take another rasterized layer style, just like so. And with this one here, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drop shadow, push this a little bit further down, change the color to something really weird for just now, move my drop shadow up, or my, excuse me, my distance up, and once I get to right about here... So I believe this drop shadow over here is a little bit more obviously thicker. So we want to make it a little more thinner, right? So do not actually overseed or exceed the thickness of that first drop shadow. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going to make this a nice little sort of uh, off-white grayish kind of tone, which is about this hex code right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And I'm going to go ahead and just go and click on this actual plus button next to my drop shadow. It'll add a duplicate of that same exact drop shadow. Of course, click on the one that's below it, right? And when you click on the one uh, that's below it, you want to change this color to more of a grayish tone just like so and then you take your distance and just simply just kind of take your scroll and move it up again and this will be kind of something around here and once you guys get to here that is pretty much the main kind of like triple kind of like i think of literally like that gum that has like that layers i forgot what it's called maybe you guys know what i'm talking about regardless that's pretty much how you guys just like do this part right here okay so to actually get this sort of darker sort of deeper black kind of uh surrounding stroke to go ahead and go through this i'm gonna go ahead and just group all this together so i'm gonna click on the actual first layer of the word crack right here and i'm gonna go hold shift just like so and i'm gonna hold Control g on my keyboard and i'll make it into a nice simple group we're gonna call this just text for now right then i'm gonna take the duplicate of the group by holding alt once again taking it dragging below it just like so makes a copy and on this copy i'm gonna press Control e and that'll merge everything together in this one simple copy and that'll just make sure i assure myself that i'm starting off my drop shadow and my stroke at the right sort of point and not where it's like the main text is because you, you guys will hopefully get that but I promise you it's the easiest way to kind of get a better stroke so i'm gonna double click on this actual text copy not that one just like no, oh i don't even know where i'm clicking when i click there okay and i'm gonna go ahead and go to drop shadow of course and you want to make sure your distance is for now at zero 100 and you make your size and you just take your size and put this up right about until you kind of i guess you kind of say that's a pretty good size i would say 13 for me is pretty good at this uh, point right here. So if I want to go ahead, click on the actual color over here and choose this blue and then kind of take it and move this further down, I can get a nice darker blue. And this is kind of how I want. I don't want a pure black unless you, can, of course, want it for yourself for your own color scheme. However, for me, if I do pure black, it just doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, blue hint inside my purple, um, my black colors. Uh, okay, and press OK and press OK again, and rather keeping it like this, right? You guys can see if I kind of zoom into these little areas here without them being right here, you can start seeing the cracks, you kind of lose them. So I would highly recommend you guys to actually go ahead and go into your pen tool and kind of pen tool around it once again and using your text copy right here as basically like an example of where to actually pen tool. So you make a new layer right above it, right? You take your pen tool, you start it just like so, and then you say when these little cracks are here, you make them very, very jagged and bring them kind of back to life. So that way the actual text effect just looks way, way better and kind of, uh, yeah, you just take your time on it kind of thing. Now, also just to mention, in these little spots right here, in these little crevices and creeps, uh, cre is that even like, okay, regardless, you want to make sure you pencil these out as well. That way, when you actually fill in everything together, you guys can go ahead and highlight these sections here once again, and of course, then delete them. So just re re do that as well, please. 
All right, and once you guys have it all filled out, you want to go ahead and make sure you turn off your text copy. Before you, of course, turn it off, you want to go to your foreground color and make sure you have that color of that background or that back sort of uh, drop shadow that you already have it. So you can make sure, of course, click on it again. So once you change it, press OK. Then you can turn it off. Then you can right click with a pen tool. You go ahead and just use uh, fill path, drop down color, and make sure that color is the same one as that foreground color or the one of your actual back plate for your, of course, once again, your stroke. You press OK and OK again, and you see everything is filled in. If you want all these little curves over here to be filled out as well, be my guest. But I, would, I also would like to, of course, bring in those sections that I put in from the last time where the thickness of the stroke is all co cohesive, I guess you can say. So I literally just hold control with my, my pen tool, of course, activated, click on it, highlight, and if I want to highlight multiple sections, I hold shift as well now, and I highlight this section, and I'll highlight this section right here, and then I can go ahead and press uh, simply right click, make selection of those actual selected little marks you can see now, and then I'll press delete, 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 delete on that actual layer. I had to do it like multiple times, so of course, it'll delete the path as well, so uh, be, be sure you guys know that as well, but I'll delete the path, and of course, delete the little sections in that little layer that you have right here. I can put this back on now, and now we have this, and we're looking pretty good, sweet. All right, guys, basically now that I've actually finished this thing off and more work on the actual foreground of this, we're actually gonna take the front plate of the word crack, right? This is that front plate, that first ever plate that we had, right? We hold Alt, or this is the first layer that we worked on, of course. Hold Alt, drag it above and out of that group layer, just like so. Then we're gonna right click, and we're gonna go ahead and just rasterize layer type, just like so, or layer style, I think that's what it is. Uh, now that you have this nice little front plate here, I'm gonna throw on this nice, simple layer style. I'm gonna show you guys right now what's inside of it. So, it's three different layers. One is your bevel and emboss. You can see these settings right here, 282, uh, 9, 1, 115 angle, 5 on my actual altitude, and then I have my light, um, uh, highlight, excuse me, and my shadow on screen and multiply, and for my screen, whether, rather, excuse me, being white, I would definitely suggest you guys to take the actual foreground color of whatever your color of your text is, right, and then you kind of move your mouse over towards the left-hand side, towards the white, but not quite there, and then leave it around this area, it'll give you a way better sort of look than rather just having a sort of like white kind of text, which is in my opinion kind of like weird and kind of ugly looking, so, Go to your inner shadow then. Core settings is 31, black, normal blend mode, 604. Gradient overlay is just a nice simple little gradient. You can put on pretty much any gradient on uh, overlay just to add a little bit more of a kind of a texture to it, right? And I'll press OK, OK once again. And then I'm gonna take this exact same layer, press Control J on my keyboard to duplicate it. And then for this layer here, I'm gonna simply just right click and then convert it into a smart object. This will basically kind of combine everything and kind of like also get rid of all the layer styles. So what we're gonna have to do is gonna take it from normal and we're gonna put it on luminosity. Now luminosity is gonna kind of make everything more darker because it's kind of taking the actual layer itself and almost duplicating all the layer styles once again, right? But we're gonna go of course use a layer mask and with our layer mask, we're gonna take a nice soft brush eraser or not a soft brush eraser, soft brush brush, okay? And then use a black brush and just simply click around the text because a lot of these kind of parts are very, very dark. We just want to add a little bit more of depth, and that's kind of why I wanted to just do it really quick and just kind of erase a little these little areas, and you get something kind of like this, and which is look pretty good in my opinion. However, your highlights are not quite done yet. What you want to go ahead and do is you want to take your actual first ever layer once again, hold control and click on the actual thumbnail of that first ever layer, right? We've been, of course been taking that layer and taking a duplicate of it and putting it above everything. You want to take that same exact layer, okay? Then once you have that marquee selection, you can see right here, those little dotted lines. You want to go ahead and make a new layer. Then you want to go to select, modify, contract, use 15 pixels, press okay. Then you want to take a brush, Right, and your foreground color, you want to basically change this to whatever your color is right here. So you can just take your eyedropper tool, click in the middle somewhere, whatever you find your color, if it's orange, purple, whatever it happens to be, right? Then you're going to take it, move it over towards the, of course, once again, that top middle where it's not white, but it also has, still has color in it, a little more pigment, right? You press OK. You take your brush, make it a little bit more smaller. Of course, this is also zero hardness again, which means a soft brush. Then you just take on the highlights or take on the, excuse me, you wanna not click in the middle, that's not what you wanna do. You wanna take your brush and basically kind of take the, the I guess the, you can't really tell, but of course you have the circle here, but on the outside as well, still is more of a feathered uh, of the actual color, and that's you wanna take your, uh, of course your mouse, and kind of click on the outside, and then use that feathering that's gonna be happening to kind of get the little edges of your letters, just like so, right? So once I kind of do this, I wanna do it here, here, and on the C of course right here, here, little bit there on the K, just like so, right? And when you're done with the extra selection, you press Control D on your keyboard to deselect. However, you can still see these really hard angles. We want to get rid of that by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, 
and then just going by about 2.1 or 2.3 pixels is pretty good. You press OK, and you can see now the highlights are not as sharp, but they're also still very vivid and very obvious where it's kind of like a shadow and highlight, which makes it more of a 3D kind of figure. And it looks pretty freaking good if you guys zoom out. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. All right, and basically now to finish this thing off, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into this little nice little highlight layer, take my eraser, and around these sections here, of course, I went over the shadows. You definitely wanna erase it. Of course, it gets rid of the whole shadow figure kind of look, so you wanna make sure you don't really ruin it there and get rid of that nice weird sort of like highlight on those basically so supposed to be cutouts, right? And now that that's pretty good, we're gonna take everything from that first layer of the highlights. And also, if you wanna make a duplicate of the highlights by pressing Control J to bring them even further out, please go to do so you can see with only one, it's not quite as visible, but with two, you can definitely get there. And also, I just realized I missed a section right here. Gotta erase that as well. Just like that, cool, perfect. Now, first highlight, you click on it, hold Shift all the way up until your actual background sort of uh, backing kind of stroke layer. You press Control J. Control E to merge it all together, and that'll give you nice a nice little cutout of the everything basically in one single layer. Then I'm gonna go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and we're gonna be using once again the uh, plastic wrap. Uh, the highlights are at 10, details are at 9, and smoothness is at 14. You press OK. You throw this on luminosity just like so. Then of course, if you guessed it, it's layer mask, and you take your black brush, and you want to go ahead and get into these sections here, and don't erase too much because you like you definitely want to keep a bit of that kind of uh, plastic wrappy look to it, but where sections you can see it's definitely weird, or even on the outside of the back plate, you'll see on the that darker color that you have in the background is a lot, like there's a, how you say, a lot of highlights to it. So you definitely want to go in there and make sure you guys tone them down by erasing over them. If you want to even take your highlight or your opacity of your brush here and even throw it down to make it even more of a calming and not so 100% on all of your actual strokes, right? You can see how it's not 100% until I do something like that. That's definitely a way to go about it to make sure you guys get very, very into it and have a lot more fun with it. Something like that. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Now, basically, I'm gonna make sure I put my brush back up to there. To finalize this, I'm gonna take once again, one final copy of that crack layer, just like so. Right click, convert it into a, excuse me, rasterize layers type. And then I'm gonna take my fill, lower it down to 0%. Double click on this, just like so. Then I wanna use inner shadow. And with this inner shadow, I wanna basically take my opacity, throw this pretty far up, and of course, all the way 100%. And then make your actual color the black. And you want to take your uh, your distance here, your size, make it maybe if about five is actually pretty good. Your choke can be a little bit further up, maybe around like the nine or so mark. And the distance, of course, just matters on how far down you want it to come down. I would say right about, I would say ten, nine, five is not bad. So once you do that, you press OK. Then you want to right click, uh, convert into a smart object. Then of course, layer mask once again. And this is where you want to kind of just erase a little bit of these little sections here. And that way you kind of have a little more kind of like a darker tone right there. And I think that looks pretty freaking good in my opinion. We're not quite done yet. You want to take all that stuff you had and you just basically created, group it all together, right? This is going to be your final, it's your final text for your actual uh, banner and whatnot or all that good stuff. You want to make a duplicate of it. Then you want to right click, uh, convert it to a smart object. And then what you can do is you can press control T on your keyboard, go to your wrap. Right, and I'd like to just use maybe like I don't know, like bulge or something. That looks that one looks not too too great, but you can kind of like shrink it. You can have any one of these little effects you want to do. I just use bulge right there. You can use one that's kind of like lower arch or something, right? If you want to kind of squeeze this up, right, and then you can put like a nice little text right below it. But this can work for thumbnails. It can work for your actual headers. And there you guys go. It's very very easy. And of course, you want to add some more little highlight glows to it. You all you have to do is make a new layer. Take your brush, right. And you want to go ahead and just take a nice little sort of like a darker color of that blue. You click, you click, linear dodge add, our best friend. And then you guys go, you have a nice little glow on it as well. And that is basically it. So, really weird kind of format. I know you're not too used to it, but let me know if you guys like it, enjoy it. It's a little more easier for me, um, since I'm not feeling too great. But regardless, I love you guys so very much. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. I love literally every last one of you guys. I had the time of my life yesterday was freaking dope. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm happy, but my body's just not feeling quite there. But I'm very happy and very proud of where we're at, and that's all I want to say. I appreciate you guys. Happy holidays, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Peace.